Hello guys and welcome back to my channel of My Life in a World and I'm a little nervous for this video guys. Um, I don't want to say that I'm spilling the tea. This is not a tea spilling video. This is a video that is going to be covering six things that I think Rollins could do better at six things that I don't necessarily like about Rollins. And this is all based on my experience, okay? So some of these things might be a great thing for you, and some of these things you might agree with me on. I do not want you to think in any sense, though, that this is a bash video, because I'm not over here trying to say you should not go to Rollins. Rollins offers so many incredible things. And as you can tell, my list, like the number of things that are bad is less than the things that are good. I had 10 and I wanted to do 10 for this video. And then I started writing them out and I realized I didn't have 10. I only had six, which is good. Like I would rather it be better than worse. But I do want to do a little disclaimer for you guys that Rollins is a private liberal arts school which makes it very different from a public four-year university like UCF or UF. These are just two that are in Florida that are near us, but it is going to be different at Rollins than it is going to be at some of these other schools just because it is private and it is liberal arts, and that means that the curriculum, the courses, the requirements can all be different. And so that is something that you need to keep in mind when watching today's video. All right, so let's go ahead and jump on into this because I do not want to be talking for 22 minutes like I was in my last video. There's nothing I can do, but I hope you enjoy this one. So I got my little paper right here uh, with my list. So if I'm looking at it, just know that's what I'm doing. So number one, guys, this is going to be the most important one, obviously, um, because I know most of you aren't even going to watch this whole video and you're going to click out in probably about 30 seconds or so. But number one is that Rollins is expensive very expensive. I got some numbers for you just in case you were wondering. So currently, 2019-2020, that school year which is now, tuition alone cost the number a whopping 53,716. Okay, aside from that, <laughs> room and board, if you choose to live on campus and eat there every day, is going to cost you around 15 grand. So when you combine those two numbers, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. One thing I did want to state is currently the cost of tuition at Harvard, which we all know is an Ivy League school, is 46000 around that number. So Rollins is more expensive than Harvard, currently. That might change. Who knows? So I'm gonna set my paper down and just kind of talk about this, this price point. Um, for me, it is very difficult to wrap my head around why Rollins is so expensive. Like in my head, I cannot justify that number in any sense. And the only reason I'm going to Rollins right now is because I got a significant scholarship from them academically. This wasn't for sports or for anything like that. It was all based on my academics. I got the Alonzo Scholarship. If you guys are wondering, you guys can research that. And I'll leave a, a link to a page that describes that scholarship below and all of their other scholarships that are available. But without that scholarship, there is no way I would be able to go to Rollins. That is just the truth. Okay, there's no way me as an individual and with the family that I have, who my dad makes pretty good money, my mom makes okay money, that they would be able to afford to pay for me or that I would be comfortable taking out the amount of debt that would be required if I didn't have any financial support. I think my biggest frustration with this price point is just like who is gonna pay that much to go to college. Why is college so expensive? I mean, that's a whole nother issue we can get into. College in general, no matter where you go, is expensive. But the fact that if I didn't have any financial aid and I graduated, I would be over $200,000 in debt. That's ridiculous. If you know that you are someone that might not be able to get a scholarship or you're not applying for one, I don't know if this is going to be the best choice for you. I'm just, I'm putting it out there, okay? But I will say Rollins does offer a ton of scholarships, and there is actually a very high percentage of people on campus that are on scholarship, but it just makes me sad. It honestly makes me sad how expensive Rollins is, and this is a con not only physically because of the money, but also socially. Like, when I tell people that I go to Rollins, they automatically assume that I'm a rich 
selfish person. And that's so sad to say because not all rich people are selfish, but they have the stereotype that I am just this type of person that is like snooty and I'm paying full price to go there and I don't really care about how much debt I have or that my parents are paying for me. And it's frustrating because that's not at all the situation I'm in and that's not who I am as a person. So it is definitely um, annoying to have to deal with that. And everyone knows that's in the Orlando area that Rollins is like a very expensive school. So just keep that in mind because um, it is definitely probably the biggest swaying point when it comes to schools is how much you're going to pay and how much you're going to be in debt when you graduate. Back to my little paper, number two is going to be the lack of diversity. Now, Rollins might come at me for this and because they do advocate and they do try to say that they are diverse. And I do think that there are portions of it that are that are true. My specific major of social entrepreneurship, I feel like we do have a very, very diverse group of students. But... As a school, when I'm walking around day to day, I don't feel that diversity. I don't feel like I am being surrounded by people of all ethnic groups. And I don't feel like there are people that are representing um, people from all around the world. So again, I have some numbers that I found from online and I'll link the websites that I found all this information uh, below. But currently, the percentage of students on campus that are white or Caucasian is 58%. So that's more than half of the students are white. When it comes to um, the professors and the staff, that makes up about 74% of them that are white or Caucasian. Um, something to keep in mind though, is that this is higher than the national average. Um, so I guess that's good. You know, Rollins is doing better than the national average. I don't know. I just feel like me and my family, my boyfriend, like when we walk around, I just don't feel like the diversity is there. I just don't feel like there are enough Hispanic kids, African American, Asian kids. I, I just, I don't see them very much and it frustrates me. So it definitely angers me sometimes when I feel like people say at Rollins, oh, we're so diverse, and they have all these pamphlets, and they have all these things, and they might have numbers to support it. I mean, numerically, they might be able to say that they are a very, very diverse school, but I'm saying as a person walking around campus, I don't feel it, and I don't feel like it's being represented. All right, back to my little list. Number three is that I feel that the culture is very split, and that division, that line of division is there for one reason only. And I believe it is because half the kids that are at Rollins are on scholarship and the other half of them are not. And they are either paying full price or their pay parents are paying for them or they're taking out all types of loans to attend the school. And I don't wanna sound, how do I even say this without even sounding rude? I don't even know. But I just personally feel like this culture, sometimes of snootiness. I don't know how to describe it, but Rollins has a stereotype and sometimes we really live up to it. That's all I know how to say it. If you know anything about Rollins around the area or if you attend other public uh, Florida institutions, a lot of people think that Rollins is rich white kids whose parents pay for everything for them. And there are many kids who I fit feel fit this description, but there are so many kids at Rollins that do not fit this description and I'm one of them. And I'm on scholarship, I'm struggling every single semester to come up with the money to pay for tuition that is left over, tuition that I have to pay that's left over after my Bright Future scholarship, my scholarship from Rollins, and then additional grants that I've gotten. And then there's still left over, there's still stuff to be paid. And I feel like those kids that are struggling with me and the kids that are worried about how much debt they're going to end up with after college, they act differently than the kids that don't have to worry about that. And they're living carefree and they might not have to worry about what kind of professional career that they are trying to seek after college. And I just feel like there is that separation. 
The separation might also be there for Greek life reasons. Um, we have a very, very high percentage of kids that are involved in a sorority or fraternity. And because I'm not one of those kids, I feel that there is a culture divide between kids that are involved in Greek life and kids that are not. That happens at every school, no matter where you go. If you offer Greek life, then there is gonna be a separation. But I think because Rollins is so, so, so small, you feel those differences way more than you would at a bigger university. All right, moving on, we got number four. And this one has been a specific frustration for me, but this might be a good thing for some people. So it's really up to you. But it's that some majors at Rollins actually require that you study abroad. And remember, if you watch my previous video, and if you haven't watched it, please, please, please watch that first. Um, I will put in a little link or Thing right here. I don't know what it's called for you guys to click on it or maybe it's here. I don't know. It's going to be somewhere. You better click on it and watch it. I know it's really long, but try to get to the spot where I'm talking about studying abroad. But if you watch that, you know that I talked about there's a lot of different lengths of time that you can study abroad. But for some majors, it's actually required that you do it. So for me, it was a frustration because I didn't want to study abroad. I want to travel. And I want to do that after I graduate, but I want to do it on my own time. I want to go with the people that I want to go with. I want to spend the amount of money that I want to spend. And that was my discomfort with it. I did not like that it was a requirement, especially for majors that I feel like it shouldn't be for. Specifically for me, specifically for me, I am a social entrepreneurship major and I didn't really understand why it was a requirement that we study abroad. For international business and international relations, I, I get it. Okay, international should mean that you have different perspectives um, on places in the world. But for me, I was just like, not only are you charging us almost $54,000 a year for tuition alone, but then you're gonna force us to study abroad as well? Why? I mean, it should be included in the tuition at this point. I feel like if you're gonna make a study abroad, then that should be included because I just don't think that it's fair to force students to pay for something that they don't want to do. And just the fact that you can withhold a student from graduating and withhold their degree because they might not have the money to travel to another continent, I mean, uh, I mean, I don't know. It was difficult for me to get around. I tried so many times to have conversations with people and say, this is stupid. Why are we doing this? I don't want to study abroad, so why should I have to? It's my degree. I'm paying you. If I don't want to pay you money, then I shouldn't have to. But it's there. So, I mean, as you know, if you watch my other video, again, I'll say that I did find a little loophole and that loophole for me, and I'm going to tell you guys it just in case this is an option for you, is to find out if you can be the student site leader. Um, again, this is kind of like you're the RA. And um, if you become the student site leader, which you have to be picked to do so, if you get it, then that means that you do not have to pay for the cost of the trip. Now, of course, you have to look for some exceptions. Um, depending on the cost of the trip, um, the cost on the website or on the program could mean it pays for everything but the ticket to get there, like the airplane ticket. Some of them include it and you have to pay for all your own food. So you just have to look into it. But for me, it meant I didn't have to pay for the food, the program, the cost of going where we were going. I just had to pay for my airplane ticket, which was still very expensive, I want to say. Yet, it kind of means I'm being paid to go because I'm working for Rollins. While I'm on this trip in Poland in March, I'm basically gonna, basically gonna be like a temporary staff of Rollins and I'm acting as a pathway of communication for the other students on the trip and the professor that is leading it. But again, I just wanna say it frustrates me that it's a requirement for some majors and um, I just think that students shouldn't be encouraged to take loans out and get more debt to go on a trip they don't want to go on. So that's my two cents and we'll move on. All right, looking at my paper again, number five, uh, this is gonna be a tricky one, is the lack of transparency for me. Um, and when I say transparency, I'm not saying transparency on everything. I'm talking about a few specific things and the first one that comes to mind is the cost. And so that was the first point I mentioned, but I think that this point um, is here because there are some schools 
especially public universities, um, and they are required by law. If you want to know where every single penny of money that goes through that school is going, you can find out. You can request a public four-year university to see the papers of where the money is going, where it's being spent, why the tuition is the price that it is. This is not the case with private schools. So I have no idea how much money is being spent on certain programs. I don't know how much money is being spent on the landscaping. This is like an inside joke at Rollins because there are always people out on campus that are cutting the grass, putting in new flowers, trimming everything. And we're like, how much money do they actually spend on landscaping? These are the type of questions that I wish could be answered. And that is why I'm saying this point. And it's just because I feel like the price could be lowered. I feel like it could be less expensive and it could be more affordable. But the thing is, is that I don't even know if they're spending the money on good things. And that is what makes me even more mad is because if we were told every year that the tuition is going up this year because we're adding this new program for kids with disabilities or kids that have accessibility issues and we're trying to make the buildings more accessible. But they don't tell us that. So as students, we see all these new buildings getting put up and other buildings getting torn down. And we're like, okay, the only clear connection that I see is that we are paying more money for buildings to be built that we're not gonna be able to use because we'll have graduated by then. And I understand that as someone that works at Rollins, this might be very frustrating that students have these assumptions, but it's there for a reason. It's because we're not told where the money goes. We're not told why our tuition is increasing by almost $1,000 every year. And I just think that if you are someone that's coming in and you know that you're not going to be able to afford this, but you also are frustrated when schools aren't able to tell you why there are increases and why you are paying the amount that you are, then this is definitely something to look into and consider. All right, we are on the last and final reason or con or disadvantage. And that is that there are a lack of majors. And there, there's really nothing that Rollins can do about this. This is just a fact. Um, but if you are wanting to go into engineering or medical school or AV, like audio and tech or the entertainment industry, I don't know if Rollins is going to be a good fit. Um, Rollins does have some special programs where they have pre-engineering or pre-med or some other things, pre-law. Um, and you can definitely look into those. I'll leave a link um, below as well so you can look into those and see if those are options for you. But if you're someone that just wants to do it, like you just want to go to college and do engineering and not do pre-engineering, then this is not for you. Okay, uh, my boyfriend, he went in for engineering and uh, that was one of the reasons he didn't go to Rollins is because they didn't offer it. Um, I don't know if it would have been the best fit anyways. Um, he really does like going to UCF and the big classrooms and all that but it's definitely something that you need to look into. So you just need to do your research and see what you think is gonna be best for you. If you come in and you still have no idea, talk to your advisor. See if they're able to lead you in the right direction like my advisor did for me. Alrighty, so that is um, really all that I have for you. Uh, six reasons, six cons, and six disadvantages. I don't know what you wanna call it, but uh, I am nervous to post this video, as I told you before I started filming. I don't know what kind of comments I'm going to get on this. I don't know what kind of feedback I'm going to get from people that go to Rollins or work at Rollins. And again, I want to say that I do love my school. I love that I go to Rollins. I think that everything happens for a reason. I got denied and rejected from UF for a reason. Like I thought I wanted to go there so badly and I don't and I go to Rollins and I love it. I love my degree so, so, so much. I love my professors. I love my classmates. I have so much fun there. And at the end of the day, I know that when I graduate, I'm gonna be able to find a job that I really love and I have already made connections professionally 
um, that I feel like will lead me to a successful future. But that is really everything I have and I just hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions, please put them down below. Um, if there's any links that I forgot, let me know as well. But please remember to like this video, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and also subscribe to my channel um, if you like me or you like my videos. Uh, it really does mean a lot. I'm currently at 211, and I would love to get to 1,000 before the end of 2020. So I love you guys so much, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!